Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Yeah, <laughs> Cordona was the previous game. Oh, that is a dog now. Who's a good boy? <gasps> is that is that or is it? it? So, that is oh, a dog that's now. a good boy. A good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, is it Toby? What do you so, think? It looks like Toby. Who's a good boy? Oh, how do we get Toby? Um, if that's Toby, I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. Mm -hmm. Oh, observations. Ah. He's heavy on his right leg. Sort of. Uh, sorry, I forgot to read earlier. Some dirt here. High heels wants to look taller. <laughs> what? Mr. Barnes has developed a limb and has large bags under his eyes, the result of long hours of intense work. He is not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hands suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be upon a bigger plan without his knowledge. Or like a victim. Mr. Barnes has large bags under his eyes and stress. He has developed a limb, likely the result of an attack. Yeah, it's not the same as what we saw. He was high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to deter future violence. Mr. Vance being threatened by someone like him of the plot against him. I actually think it's alcoholic. <sighs> I forgot if the game even tells me if it's wrong. <laughs> but I think this makes more sense. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am... Deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just tag you to pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. was oddly strange. Press LB to highlight interactive areas in the environment around you. Huh. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. So, so cute! Has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? I'm a good boy. Catalogue of exotic plants on Barnes' counter, the name of the catalogue reads Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Law. <laughs> That's cute. So not poisonous plants. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Anything behind the counter? Okay. 
three. Power of love, blood and mandrake. Mm. Mystery also. Edwin Booth. It's really difficult to read. What books are in the section with the broken letter? I will check. Give me a second and welcome Taki. Hi, dear. Oh, I'm so curious about this game. Ah, <sighs> he. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Interesting. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. <laughs> Finest view London has to offer. <laughs> Hello. Hope you had a good Tuesday. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can read that, to be honest. I don't even think they have any titles. You know, I, I can't. They don't have any text on them. Good guess, though. Lance has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. The Strand. Killing Tempest. I mean, this would just be going outside, wouldn't it be? Oh, you check that. Or should we check the door? Maybe we can. I would think we go out, but... Yes, we go out. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> so, why not? Maybe we can check if there are any more deductions. Look in that. Seeing as all them left annotations. Secret door behind the bookshelves. <laughs> Not in the first first case, I think. But who knows? I think it is maybe the reason for his leg that he's limping. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Why is he acting so strangely? I would say that flower is on display. Um, I guess he's involved, yeah. And uh, hmm. the cactus vine, maybe. Okay. So the that flowers are wrong. Oh, what does that mean? Or oh, only the dead flowers are right? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, that. Okay, that's what this means. Uh... What's cryptology again? That was just. Ancient Egypt writing, right? Broken letter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe the plants because one of it is poisonous? Of course not! <laughs> <laughs> ah, but wait, then what even is that? Wait, the Swin Swedish princess is somehow connected to all of this? 
Swedish. Making so many mistakes. How? Okay, wait. Now it's really getting... I thought we have to connect blue with blue. And green with green. And now I have not a single green. <laughs> but maybe I was wrong. Maybe let's check this one. Oh, I'm just missing something. Three categories. Each... Category appears on a different screen. Items, documents, observations. Often you will not have all the correct evidence to answer each question, so keep investigating until you do. Answering a question of correct evidence on the first strike answer bonus. Yeah, okay, we can't forget about that already. <laughs> Maybe because I thought we have to do this before talking with him. Yes, we have. Okay. I'm just missing something. Do I maybe even have to go outside? Or should we just keep a cactus needle in a haystack? Hmm. A spine in a bookstack? No, come on, Watson, think. It's a big question if I should just continue. But I mean, I'm missing documents completely. See, the, ah, see, that doesn't even work. Okay. Okay. Hope I didn't make the wrong character. But but game wouldn't let me not continue, so nothing else I see here. I get a feeling it's maybe outside. But if you see anything, let me know. But I don't. Maybe we just have to leave. <laughs> that might be do we have to talk to him? A dog! Hello there. What's your name? Pookie Pookie. Lily, I know. Not very original. Mm. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. I should have worn something warmer. Aha! Uh -huh. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses? Our national emblem. God save the queen. <gasps> Cactus! Familiar spine? Is this what I found in my dustbin? What's the question mark? Question mark? Question mark? The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. <laughs> what question mark? In the hints. Oh, one second. But I think it was the... The help text I opened. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. One second. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? Hmm. Luxury fabric, unusual for work attire. Morning, Bruce. Hammering deceased husband. Clean boots change shoes upon arrival. And check the dog. No. Very makeup for beauty or concealment. Concealment of what? Distant look avoids eye contact or distracted. Mrs. Fleming uses makeup to hide her tear-stained cheeks. Her dress is made from an 
expensive fabric that is not suitable for outside work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. While she tries to bury her grief by dressing extravagantly, she still wears a mourning brood in memory of her late husband. Her gaze, always staying off into distant reveals her emotional detachment. Taken as a whole, one must conclude that Miss Van is still reeling from her tragic loss. Or, what well, I guess might be more the case. Mrs. Fleming wears a morning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress made from her. She must have her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search for something. Perhaps she's waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on. As to suggested by her makeup and nice outfit, perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention or simply because she has learned to love herself. I have to say it sounds like it. this one. Who knows if it's true? Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. Uh, evidence? What? Evidence? I'm not sure if I have any evidence. I will get to that question mark again. Just give me a second. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. So you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. I'm just wondering, is the game way too quiet for you? I have the feeling it might be a little bit too quiet. <laughs> it was very loud in the menu and now it's a little bit quiet. Position and view of the dry flowers in the window that are used as a sign. She sells flowers. Maybe she will sell the flowers that are to replace the dry ones in the window when the job is done. Yeah, more or less. So she's looking for the sign of the new flowers. Maybe. I mean, she acts like it's her shop, right? Uh, don't we have the cactus spine somewhere? Uh... Who knows? Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Mm -hmm. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. Question mark on this screen. Ah! The strand is missing. <laughs> Watson brought it in the morning's post, but the strand is missing. That's a newspaper. I disposed of it before entering the building because the pages were soiled. There's still a chance it might be found in the dustbin in the newspaper. It's indeed in the bin. I don't know anything about this. Ah. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. Ha! Huh. She hopes. Does she like him? Okay, so... And a few new things. There's nothing new, right? Tend to come out for flowers when it rains. Perhaps I should try selling door to door. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Raymond Kim. She doesn't know how the cat disappeared on her display. She went for a break and when she came back, it was there. Why is there still the symbol for the map? I'm wondering, because we're already here. Stanwick's Manor? What did I miss? Not that any of these is really matching, I have to say. Let's try it. Yay. He's in love with Mrs. Fleming. Oh, Barnes displays a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Mrs. Fleming, a florist. You may hope she will come into the shop and give him watering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of his desperation. <laughs> Barnes and Mr. gifted her a cactus. Which he ordered from the catalogue on his counter. Question of choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love. Since the catalogue presents this cacti as immortal. Right, we had this flower thingy for eternal love, right? Of course. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. Then why did he run away? Why do you make yourself suspicious by running away? Ah, yeah, and I, I thought you were talking about, um... Oh, I don't get the question mark anymore. What? Hmm. Okay. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. You better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. <laughs> Though he's so cute. Mr. Barnes? I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Ah, oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. Do I? As in most mm. things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. Ah, that's what true. What's the worst that can happen? She rejects you and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. Who does? At last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. 
You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. The Strand, September 28th, 1882. Saul Peter Explosion Rocks Dogs. <laughs> What's the title? Locals at the port of London had a rude awakening last night, with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Moskva had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening, en route to Europe, and it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The port authority is yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing Sir Peter leaking into the river, but with the area still off limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Oh, my two lads just died. Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. Tell you what, tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure Barnes has had enough of our meddling, Mr. Holmes. We best be off. Well, that was an utter waste of time. <laughs> an assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career. But it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Two wardrobe items acquired. New rewards unlocked. Whee! So I hope the screen symbol means it's done. That's why we had the manor on the map. What did we get? Cordona suit. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Although I never wore, I wore this one. Yeah, oh, it was actually pretty cool. Let's go for it for a while. I wanted to get rid of the hat. Actually, we not have any different hair, do we? Not really. That's awfully strange. Might come in later. Who knows? <sighs> On the same street. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We walk past the manor at some point. Not much further now. Oh, there it is. 